When the original Xbox was released in 2001, it came with a modest 64 megabytes of RAM, which to be honest, was pretty high compared to its competitors. However, upon examining the motherboard, it became immediately apparent that only half of the RAM sockets were populated, meaning we could double the RAM to 128 megabytes by installing four additional modules. Fast forward 23 years, and a modder by the name of Prehistoric Man is pushing the boundaries even further by increasing the Xbox RAM to 256 megabytes. And he's doing it with these. So let's dive in and check it out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Now today we'll be taking a look at a mod that I would consider both a technological achievement for the Xbox, but also kind of useless, at least for the moment. What we have here is a 32 megabyte RAM module. It sits on top of a custom design interposer that adapts the BGA RAM chip so that it can be installed onto an original Xbox motherboard. Now you may be asking, okay Tito, what's the big deal here? Well, this here is the original RAM module that came with the Xbox in 2001. It only has a capacity of 16 megabytes. I think you can probably see where I'm going. If we install these new RAM modules into all eight of the available RAM slots on the Xbox motherboard, we'll have 256 megabytes of RAM. Previously, we've only ever had the ability to upgrade the console to 128 megabytes. This is the first time in the history of the original Xbox that we'll be increasing the RAM above 128. So for a bit of background, the Xbox came configured from the factory with four 16 megabyte RAM chips installed on the motherboard for a total of 64 megabytes. But people soon realized that there were four empty RAM slots on the motherboard, two on each side. By populating those empty slots with four more modules, we could increase the RAM by another 64 megabytes for a total of 128. This was actually how Microsoft configured Xbox dev kits back in the day, as well as the Shihiro Arcade Machine, which was a collaboration with Sega that used original Xbox hardware. So upgrading to 128 megabytes of RAM has been a well-known mod for a while in the Xbox community. However, an extremely talented modder by the name of Prehistoric Man, who you may remember from my 1.6 Xbox 128 megabyte RAM video, thought about whether we could push the boundaries of the Xbox even further. And well, we now have an original Xbox with 256 megabytes of RAM, something that has never been done before. Now I'm sure you have a ton of questions running through your head right now, like will this improve the graphics of games or will we have faster load times? So let's dive in and take a look. All right, so in this video, we'll take a closer look at the new RAM module itself to try and understand at a top level how it works. Then I'll attempt to show you how it's installed, go over its features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Okay, so this here is the fully assembled RAM module, which is made of two parts. We have the actual RAM chip itself, which as I stated, has a capacity of 32 megabytes, and right below it is the interposer, which is what allows the chip to interface with the Xbox motherboard. Here you can see the part number on the chip and that it's manufactured by Hynix, which along with Samsung, also manufactured the original RAM for the Xbox. Now by comparison, the new RAM chip is quite a bit different from the original in that it's smaller and instead of having legs, it utilizes a BGA or ball grid array in order to mount. These two differences make this chip completely incompatible with the Xbox, which is where the interposer, just a fancy way of saying adapter, comes into play. The interposer essentially adapts the BGA RAM chip to fit the footprint of the original RAM socket. It's made of a very unique four layer rigid flex from PCBWay, who happens to be the sponsor of today's video, but more on them in just a second. Here you can see an original Xbox chip next to the upgraded module side by side, and thanks to the interposer, they essentially occupy the same footprint. Now, obviously simply adapting the form factor of the chip doesn't alone make this whole thing work. You need a very specific chip for this to function properly. And this Hynix chip that Prehistoric Man has sourced is really the only viable option. You see, it essentially shares the same architecture as the original RAM chip with the addition of having an extra addressing bit, which is what allows it to double its memory. It's also slightly faster, at least on paper, but we'll see in a moment that in practice, this really doesn't matter, at least for now. 
If you're curious about the more technical side of how this mod actually works, Prehistoric Man will be publishing a video on his YouTube channel that goes into all the gory details, so definitely check that out if you're interested, and I'll have that link down below. All right, so now that we have a bit of a better idea of how this mod works, let's go ahead and install them into the console itself. But before we do that, let's of course talk about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's go ahead and see if we can upgrade the RAM in my Xbox. So the first thing we need to do is of course, remove the motherboard from the console. Easy enough. Then we need to remove all four RAM modules. To do this, I took some capped on tape and placed a piece on each of the four sides of the chip as close to the pins as possible, shown here. This creates an outline around the chip, protecting all the small components in the surrounding area. After making the capped on tape perimeter, I removed it and used it as a template to extend the coverage of protection by adding some aluminum foil to the tape template. I then used this DIY heat shield to help protect all the components surrounding the RAM chips as I used hot air to remove each one. After removing the first chip, I proceeded to removing the remaining three following the same process. After all four chips have been removed, I used some no clean flux and solder braid to remove any residual solder. Then, after giving the area a good clean, I marked the socket so that I can remember this is where an original RAM chip used to be, because we will need to install our first four RAM chips into those same sockets in order for the Xbox to do an initial boot. Next, let's move our attention to the new RAM module. We'll need to bend each of the four edges down so that they will be able to contact the pads on the motherboard. To do this, I use a flat surface like the tabletop here and bend them down uniformly as shown. This results in a uniform bend, this one is actually too bit of an aggressive bend as it needs to only be flush with the bottom of the chip. Anyway, proceed to bending the remaining three edges. And this is the final result. Now we can proceed to soldering in the new module, ensuring it's properly oriented by aligning the dot on the motherboard with the triangle on the RAM module. Once all the pins are aligned, Tack the chip in a few places so that it doesn't move. Then go ahead and fully solder it in place.
and here's what the new RAM module should look like when it's fully installed. I used a multimeter to ensure that there was no bridging and proceeded to installing the remaining four modules. Now after installing all four RAM modules, I reattached my mod chip which was running a custom version of XBlast OS that was modified by Prehistoric Man. This will allow us to see all four of our new RAM modules which should now total 128 megabytes of RAM. So after reinstalling the motherboard into the Xbox and turning it on, XBlast OS booted, but we only saw 64 megabytes. Now unfortunately, this would be the start of hours of debugging that I did with Prehistoric Man, and we unfortunately could not figure out what was going on, and why we couldn't see the 128 megabytes of RAM. So I ended up mailing him my Xbox so that he could take a closer look at it, and try to figure out what actually went wrong. Now I know it's a bit unusual, but I actually wasn't able to successfully install the RAM chips myself. I have to really thank Prehistoric Man for taking the reins on this mod, because he was able to fully upgrade the Xbox for me, so that I can show you what it can do. Now, as it turns out, it wasn't fully my fault that I couldn't get the mod to work. According to Prehistoric Man, the likely cause of the problem occurred when I bent the pins down on the interposer as part of the installation process. Bending them just a hair too much will actually cause microfractures that sever traces on the interposer itself, effectively rendering the modules useless. Now, to address this, Prehistoric Man is actually in the process of redesigning the interposer so that this is no longer an issue, as well as hopefully making the installation process a bit easier to do and debug. Anyway, I'm just thankful we now have a fully working unit, so let's go ahead and take a look at it and go over its features. Okay, so as soon as you turn the console on, we can see that I boot right into XBlast OS. And if you look here, we see the console recognizes all 256 megabytes of RAM, which means the modules are properly installed. Now, this is a custom version of XBlast OS that Prehistoric Man modified himself so that we can see all the additional RAM. Okay, so now I'm gonna load our custom BIOS from Bank 1, which again is a modified version of the X2 BIOS that Prehistoric Man compiled. And once XBMC is loaded, I can show you what we can do with all this extra RAM. And we can play an 8K upscaled video at about one frame per second. Yeah, so for the time being, having 256 megabytes of RAM is kind of useless. As a proof of concept, it's pretty amazing that we're able to play one of my videos upscaled to 8K. And taking a look here, based on the amount of RAM that's being used for this, we can see that even 128 megabyte modded consoles would not be able to run this video. When playing the 8K video, we can see that the Xbox is utilizing about 163 megabytes of RAM, with only about 90 megabytes remaining. And even though it appears to be running at between 6 and 12 frames per second, it feels more like 1 frame per second. So yeah, all this extra RAM in the Xbox really doesn't amount to anything, and that's primarily due to the BIOS. In order to get full utilization and functionality out of the additional memory, a new BIOS needs to be written. I'll briefly get into what the possible use cases is for all this extra RAM in just a moment, but let's first take a look at the pros and cons. I have to say that, at least for now, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. For such a difficult mod, there really isn't anything to show for it. I suppose one could flex on other Xbox enthusiasts and brag about all the additional RAM they have, but other than that, there's not much to speak of. Of course, there's always the potential future enhanced capabilities, which again I'll talk about in a moment, but there really isn't anything concrete to share at this time. So with that, let's take a look at the cons. Now while this project is really amazing, we're still in the early stages, so there are quite a few problems that will hopefully be addressed moving forward. For starters, this is an incredibly difficult mod, especially in its current state. A regular 128MB RAM upgrade is already difficult in its own right, but having to both remove all the old RAM chips and install 8, yes, 8 new RAM modules is extremely challenging. Additionally, you have to install the initial 4 RAM modules first flawlessly so that the console can actually do an initial boot. If there's an issue with the install for those first four RAM chips, the console will not boot at all, making debugging extremely difficult. Now thankfully, after I attempted the install myself, Prehistoric Man has developed a special BIOS specifically for debugging the initial installation of the first four RAM modules. Basically, after installing them and turning the console on, the ring LED in the front of the Xbox will illuminate a different color if it detects an issue and will indicate which RAM module is faulty based on that specific color, allowing you to narrow down the affected module. Now, after you get the first four RAM chips installed properly, you can go ahead and install the next four one by one and test accordingly. Basically, it's an extremely involved process and it's not for the fan of heart. Another con is that the new modules actually run slower than the original RAM chips. 
Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that these new chips are actually spec to run at a higher speed than the original ones. However, in practice, running them at stock speeds or higher causes stability issues, which will lead to the Xbox to crash. Now to fix this, Prehistoric Man had clocked the RAM speeds down to maintain console stability at the cost of performance. Now, he also did say that this is something that could be addressed with an updated BIOS, so hopefully this is a fix that we'll see in the near future. And really, the last issue is usability. For all the cons that I just mentioned, this mod in its current state is essentially useless, but let's hope that changes here in the near future. And speaking of which, here are some of the potential use cases that we could see with the additional RAM. So according to Prehistoric Man, there are a few instances in which more RAM could be effectively utilized. First, for those that want to use the Xbox as a Linux machine, having the additional headroom would certainly improve the overall performance. This is probably a very niche group of people, but for those that like to do retro computing on older consoles, this could be a welcome change. Now, another very niche use case for this could be the ability to run multiple applications at the same time. This would be similar to what modern consoles can do. For example, hitting the PlayStation button on my PS5 takes me back to the dashboard. In theory, you could do something similar with, say, XBMC, and run other applications while you're playing a game. Or you could possibly run two games at the same time. Not sure why you would need to do that, but it is possible. You have to remember that the stock Xbox only has 64 megabytes of RAM. These new modules essentially quadruple that, so there's definitely a lot of headroom for possibilities. But other than that, there really isn't much else that can be done. I asked Prehistoric Man if there would be any improvements to gaming, and he said that most likely there wouldn't be any perceptible improvement in gameplay, even with all this added RAM. But regardless, I have to say that this is a really cool mod, and it's projects like this that make the retro modding community so interesting. It may not be the most practical mod, but it's definitely pretty awesome that it can be done. Now to stay up to date on this project, as well as everything that Prehistoric Man is working on, be sure to follow him on all of his socials, which I'll have linked down below. Well folks, there you have it. Quadrupling the RAM on your Xbox. While not the most practical mod for the console, it's definitely super interesting. Now if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next time.